Well, today uh, we will have our next case of fish disease, which is number 32. It's about uh, Corridora agassizi, uh, wild ones, which had parasitic worm infections, which is quite often the case with, uh, well, with wild Corridoras. Uh, here we see the fish in the aquarium. Uh, you, you can see that some are very dark, some still have a very good shape, but not all of them. There is a certain percentage which is damaged, showing this shaky behavior. And some of the species, like here, you see the tail is already damaged. So uh, look at this dark one here. It's not all of them, it's just a few here. This one in the back, particularly. Uh, and they look weak. You have a percentage loss every, every day. A uh, few die, only few, a few stay alive. And well, obvious, nothing else we can see uh, on, on, on the skin or externally, except that tail rot and the darkening. But if we try to examine the fish and use a microscope, uh, we found here, taken a sample of the gills, it was a little damaged, but not that majorly as a problem. We didn't see any major gill rot or no parasites. A so little damage here, but nothing obviously as a, as, a, as a disease or a pathological symptom. But internally, well, important when you have a wild corridora, you must really check internally the organs, particularly the gut. And you see all the encapsulated worms here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here, uh, that's all metasarcaria, encapsulated digenetic trematodes. It is a worm larvae, which will develop in an adult worm larvae when the fish has been eaten by another fish or by a bird or by human, can become a big worm. And here we see also nematode here being in, nearly encapsulated. And we see other parts of the intestine. Oh, we, we see encapsulated metasarcaria around, but we also found a few uh, small nematodes still uh, moving around and, and well, causing damage. Here we see another one, which is uh, free around, moving again. And there's another one here, which is uh, a large nematode, which is encapsulated. So we found two different types of worms, maybe three. We didn't do a diagnostic. What is really the kind of worm? We know what your nematodes and uh, metasarcaria, some free. And you also found that so, some bacteria are around here, a heavy bacterial load. So we see a combination of problems. We also had a chance to check the kidney and we found a lot of calcium deposits here in the kidney tissue. That means that the kidney is not properly working anymore and causing, of course, organ failure. We found a high load of bacteria and then pathological uh, necrosis in, in the kidney. So that was another problem, which was maybe secondary after the worm infection or combining together. But usually parasites and bacteria are, are coming together on fish diseases. Same for skin or gill flukes. Usually bacteria join the parasitic infection. So sometimes you have to treat both. So what can you do as a treatment in, in, in this case here? Well, we can clearly identify that there are nematodes and worms with a cercaria playing a role. Uh, bacterial infections can be regarded as secondary. Yes, because of the collecting, the transport, the stress, the weakening. Secondary bacterial infections are very often secondary after uh, weakening of the immune system or parasitic infections. So the first thing you should try to do, like I explained here, try, try to give perfect water conditions and a good food supply. The very weak ones, you better euthanize them. Put them asleep because you, you will not cure them with any medication or any food. It's better to get them out of their suffering. And it's a small percentage, which you could check daily and take them out. You can try an anti-war medication like Prazicantel or Levamizol to control the free uh, nematodes because the encapsulated worms, you cannot treat because they are encapsulated and the medicine will not reach there. But the fish is encapsulating it, so it's protecting himself against the parasite. But still, there can be organ lesion. So, and secondary bacterial infections can come up. So that's why we recommend that you apply an antibacterial medication if the fish getting worse. So like oxytetracycline, feraltadol. 
And we have a fish food, which is called Dr. Baslier Biofish Food Pumpkin Seed Extract to feed at least 20 days, which helps the fish to recuperate, regenerate, or defend themselves against the worm, internal worm infection. So it's a helpful tool uh, as, uh, as a phytobiotic treatment for the health of your wild Corridoras. So this is a case of Corridora agassiza, agassizi, but I'm sure many more uh, wild Corridoras are suffering from this kind of problem. So stay tuned. You will have uh, more of these kind of problems certainly coming up when you're importing wild fish or dealing with wild fish. Thank you for your attention and see you for the next video.